po ng ugnayang Estados Unidos at ang Pilipinas. History tells us that the U.S. has been one of the strongest allies of the Philippines, if not the strongest, but some of our kababayans don't think so. And so here is part two of our interview with Representative Ed Royce. He is the chair of the Subcommittee of uh, Terrorism, Nonproliferation, and Trade sa House Foreign Affairs Committee. There are some uh, people writing about, and uh, the, perspe uh, the perspective is, and the perception is, uh, you know, there's an article here, it says Pentagon's new China war plan. The perception is U.S. is uh, strategically reducing its commitments in Iraq and Afghanistan to prepare for something oh, in Asia. Oh, no, no. The United States, the last thing we want are tensions in that area. We want to reduce those tensions. We want stability in those straits. Because, frankly, if you think about it, if we get tensioned in those areas, uh, that's going to increase the costs of, uh, of gasoline, you know, of, of oil. That's going to spike. It's, it's going to cause economic dislocation. Mm -hmm. That's very much against our interests. The United States, what we would like to see is a ratcheting down of tensions. But for that to happen, the international community has to work in concert to convince China not to lay claim to be to reasonable. Filipino tape. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Just be reasonable. So when no. you say that you're helping reduce uh, the tension in China, in Asia right. um, with that issue, there are also tensions in the Philippines with militant groups um, up in arms now against U.S.-China rela uh, U.S. Uh, U.S. Philippines relationship. Some people don't like visiting forces agreement. Yeah, Some the, people the, don't the like the Communist Party yeah. of the Philippines is not supportive uh, of, of our efforts. But of course, part of our efforts have been to protect the Philippines uh, from these organizations, mm -hmm. not just from the Communist Party of the Philippines, but also, of course, you know, from the uh, Moral Liberation Front and, and the Moral Islamic Liberation Front mm -hmm. um, and Abu Sayyaf, which operates, you know, in tandem with these Although organizations it's not just to some the, extent. It's not just the Communist Party, so there are a lot of women's groups that are against uh, U.S. forces, against the Visiting Forces Agreement. Well, you see, the, the difficulty is this. We are responding to requests from President Aquino and from the government there. The number of people who have lost their lives are in the thousands every year. If we went back a few years uh, from the Communist Party of the Philippines, I mean, they've killed 30,000 people, over 30,000 people. If we look at these liberation fronts operating in the southern Philippines, uh, and, you, and you go back the last few generations, it's, it's over 100,000 people that lost their lives. Right. So the question at some point is, since the United States isn't providing troops to fight, but is providing actionable intelligence against groups like Abu Sayyaf, mm -hmm. and is providing, as well as the intelligence, training. Helping train, yes. If, if we're not there to do that, then who's to assist the Philippine uh, military the Philippine uh, Armed Forces in terms of their efforts right. against Abu Sayyaf well, and their allies. We're definitely grateful for your help to the Philippines, and we definitely need it as a small nation. But I guess what we're looking for, what other groups are looking for, is the commitment to protect women in our nation and to protect natural resources that apparently that, that's the, the attempt. Have been. That's the attempt on, on behalf of the United States. That's part of the training is to make certain that those protections that kind of training takes place. Now, as you know, the United, the United States, the U.S. forces will leave immediately. I mean, we will pull our Navy SEALs out if requested by the Filipino government. I mean, we are in each of these cases answering a request mm -hmm. from President Aquino. And as, as you're aware, if, if we're requested to leave, we of course will leave. But, but post 9-11 and with the terrorism that you know, it occurs in the southern Philippines, we're being requested, frankly, you know, with the intelligence and with the training to continue to provide it. We do not provide soldiers to fight. Mm -hmm. um, yes, just that's to part train. Of the agreement. Just yes. to train. Yes. But if, if that creates a problem for the government... It's creating, we, you know, pro, uh, the growth of the, the pro, uh, prostitution in the Philippines. Some, um, they're saying well, that some of our women are being violated. This is a very small contingent of U.S. forces, as you know. I mean, we're talking about several hundred mm -hmm. uh, Navy SEALs uh, and, and, uh, and uh, special uh, Army, right. you know, uh, special forces units. And so 
I wonder if some of that is propaganda, mm. to be honest. Okay, okay. And that said, sir, uh, we're very thankful, like yeah. I said earlier. Um, now we're talking more deeply about, you know, deepening and strengthening U.S.-Philippines relationship. Very quickly, because we're running out of time, what can we expect from the U.S.? What can the Philippines expect more from the U.S.? Well, some of the things uh, that we're trying to do, of course, with these hearings and with our policy is to further advance uh, trade and investment, put the Philippines on the map for U.S. trade and investment. The Philippine economy has been growing at 5 percent a year, but we feel if, if structural reforms are, are made, if, the, if President Aquino's reforms can really be implemented throughout those, the economy, then the 5 percent growth rate you've seen the last four or five years you know, could be much higher, mm -hmm. could be much higher, and that would be a win-win. We also have the, the Filipino-American business community, which is sort of a bridge right. and has a very real interest and has asked us, I'm on the Philippine caucus, to try to push these reforms right. because it will increase the security for investment. And, that's, mm -hmm. and that said, what can the Filipino people do to help you? Viewers that are watching right, right now, what can we do to help you in this? Oh, I think, I think the major issue really for the Philippines, if we think about it, is getting the economic reforms in place. Place. Because the, the anti-corruption efforts that President Aquino is undertaking, those, I think, are the most far-reaching and, and long-term. Second, protecting press freedom in the Philippines. I've been involved uh, in an initiative, uh, you know, uh, in, in we've got to protect journalists, broadcasters in the Philippines. And we've, we've been carrying on a dialogue with the government to make certain that, you know, there is investigation mm -hmm. uh, in cases where journalists have been killed or injured. And people are held accountable. And, and you've got that accountability, right, with a trial, and, and, and you find out who's behind it. That's, mm -hmm. that's very important. Mm -hmm. Transparency okay. and, and the uh, anti-corruption initiatives are very, very important. And then second, I would just say this deepening possibility of trade between the United States and the Philippines that we're trying to push in Washington right now. And very much needed, and that's why we are confident that with you at the helm. Mm -hmm. We're in good place. Well, thank you. Thank you so much and more Appreciate power to you. It.